What's up guys? Welcome to a short edition, short video of a tournament that we were, we were following. Um, and the hero of this tournament is, yes, it's big. It's Black Chip Poker, part of the Merge Network. It's a 1500 guaranteed freeze out. Um, let's take a look at what's going down here. We get an open limp from the um, hijack. And you can see he has the big in sixth place out of 17 players left. And it looks like he decides to bump it up on the button. And let's just take a look real quick. We're going to put this on pause. So the blinds are 750 and 1500. Nano open limps um, 1500. So basically, essentially, he has about 20, like late 20s big blind stack. So about like maybe 28 BBs or so stack. Um, yes, it big has a little bit less. And uh, what I'm seeing, what I see here is essentially, yes, the big is trying to punish the limper here uh, because it's perceived when you limp in late position, it really looks. Uh, look fishy and if you call then it might be labeled a <laughs> so in this scenario uh, yes the big raises I'm thinking that he just wants to take it down there and then um, with his sizing 3.5 X sizing um, I, I don't mind that sizing I like that um, if nano decides to call that really uh, leads me to believe that nano is a weaker player um, if I were Nano and I felt like yes, the big were trying to punish me for limping, I I don't fault re-raising or shoving, um, simply because I, I just think that yes, the big is trying to take advantage of the situation. Um, but it all depends on how yes, the big plays and his uh, table image and his playing dynamics at the particular tournament. But uh, you know, the size and kind of indicates he does want to play a hand. But also he wouldn't mind a fold, so let's see what happens. And it looks like Nano deliberates and then he calls. So he didn't snap call, and I don't know, he didn't snap call. So he probably has a hand that isn't obviously decent to raise, pre uh, pre flop obviously to open raise, he had to limp it. Um, it could be he had a small pair, like maybe, I don't know, he could probably have like, you know, I would say sixes plus, or, you know, even five plus there. Um, obviously, if he had like tens or jacks, whatever, he'd be raising free flop or nines even. Uh, he might be doing this limping, limp calling with jack ten, um, queen jack, you know, ace jack. I, I would think that with ace queen, Ace Queen plus, like Ace Queen, Ace King, he'd raise. I, I would think he might even raise with Ace Jack. Again, I don't really have much reads on this player Nano. Um, all I know is that he's limped um, and limp called, and stacks are relatively um, significant because you pretty much even be getting in on the turn. The way sizing will indicate uh, stack to pot ratio here, because it looks like you know he can bet half pot, um, about 7,500 or so, you know, 7,000 or so. Um, he calls at 14, at 28 in the pot, and on the turn, um, that's basically pot size bet left on the turn to ship it. So um, on this flop, I don't think it hits his limping range, limp calling range, to be honest. Uh, if Nano decides to continue with his hand, um, I would put him on a maybe um, over pair, but then again, you know, it, it really, really hard to determine. I, I do think that he could be on a flush draw of sorts if he does decide to check call. Um, if he donks out, I really like a, uh, a raise, obviously. Um, but it's just let's see what happens here. But I, I, but I imagine that we'll be getting this in on the turn. Uh, but let's see what happens. So he checks. So yes, the big decides to bet fairly large. Um, in the, his bet, it really indicates to me, at, at first glance, is that he's willing to get this in. So if Nano decided to 
shove over this bet, um, check shove kind of scenario. Um, I, I, I do imagine yes, the big just snap calls. Um, what I perceive yes, is big range pre flop and now continuing post is that he probably has a decent pair. Um, I and he's basically trying to protect against the flush. Um, although I don't see Nano really having a flush in his in his range, flush draw in his range, um, unless he had like a suited Jack Ten or um, Queen Jack suited stuff like that. But it does look like yes, big fairly com comfortable and confident to get to this uh, get all the chips in on this kind of a board. So um, unless I have like three four clubs in which I really can't see nano limp calling pre um, I'm pretty much gonna be check folding here um, don't see how he can get past that so in this scenario I, I just I just imagine that he's gonna check fold but uh, see what happens because there's obviously a uh, big indicator that yes the big wants to get it in So it looks like Nano tank calls. I mean, doesn't snap call, but he doesn't tank hard. So it was kind of like, ah, uh, I'm gonna call it. And the interesting thing is, this eight doesn't really improve much um, in, in 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 retrospect to anyone's holdings. Um, yeah, very hard to see someone having nine seven here. Uh, very hard to see someone having um, eight six uh, here. So now with a double uh, flush possibility board um, draw rather, it leads to the thought process is I, I know 100% sure that if Nano checks, yes, the big is getting in. I mean, he pretty much declared it on the flop. He pretty much said, "Hey, I want to I want to play for stacks. I like my hand. Let's go." And Nano kind of did the tentative, like, weak um, player kind of scenario where he'll say, you know what, I like my hand, I can't fold it, but yet I don't want to get it in. I want to see a bingo card on the turn. So that's why he called. <laughs> so, so I really don't think uh, that 8 helps him at all. In fact, if Nano decides to ship here, I mean, I'm snap calling. Uh, and uh, I'd be, yeah, I'd be snap, I'd be Fifth pump snap calling here, um, but let's see what happens. So nano checks, <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and you can see yesterday just snap shoves. He he pretty much had it all down, pretty much what he wanted to on that flop, and um, that eight doesn't hurt his um, over pair um, cards at all. And uh, yeah, he definitely wants to uh, protect his hand as well, get as much value as he can. Because Nano seems like he's a weak player. Um, so yeah, he has a big decide to shove it in. And uh, Nano, I think, should be folding here. Um, which is unfortunate because look, look at the blinds. Um, the blinds about to go up in about two minutes be 1k 2k and now he's only be, he's gonna be stuck with like 12 big blinds something like that so really bad bad play by this guy nano I mean he really gave away a lot of his chips and yes he big played it really well um, just um, just really well and um, yes I wouldn't be fine if he had if he had tens oh, not ten but um if yes big had a good pair um, and Nano, I would be very surprised if he calls here. I mean, he, you know, but let's see what happens. All right, so you folded. So yeah, so I uh, just basically the video will just consist of one hand. It's just basically kind of get an idea of a hand played in the, the late stages of an MPT um, it goes to show that you can have lots of value still left in a late stage MPT you definitely have to uh, pay credence and adherence to position um, and recognize certain spots that are profitable and exploitable 
And so in this scenario, yes, the big had position. He had the button, which is the ultimate position. He recognized that someone in late position in the hijack limped. He decided to isolate. Um, I agree with his bed sizing, about 3.5. I would like it a little bit uh, more, maybe about 4x, 4.5x. Um, and anyway, that's still fine though. Um, Nano call, which was, in my opinion, uh, just weak because limp calling. I mean, uh, he's trying to set mine. It just doesn't make any sense. He did not get the right odds to do that if he had a pair to set mine. Um, if he thought that yes, big was playing playing at him because he limped, then yeah, maybe shoving there, even though it seemed kind of weak. Uh, you know, given that player dynamic, player tendencies, and leveling. Uh, that wouldn't be such a bad thing, but then again, if he's limping in late position, he probably didn't even understand the concept of leveling and levels one, two, and three, and so forth. So, um, yeah, he played that bad in terms of calling and limp calling off a good percentage of the stack, and then on the flop, he compounded his error by just calling a pretty um, innocuous board. Now, Inoculus in the sense that yes, the big probably not gonna have any of that that hand. However, nano probably doesn't have any of that hand. So the idea is this: so yes, the big basically says I'm pot committed. What are you gonna do? Oh, okay, well if I'm nano, then if you're telling me you're pot committed, I'm not calling. I'm folding, saying good game, good hand, and this go, go on to the next hand, right? But in this scenario, nano decides to give chips to yes, the big because I guess he likes yes, the big name. I mean. He, he's probably thinking, man, I'm nano, which means small, and this guy's yes is big, so I must give props and respect to yes is big. I must donate. So I don't know how that w worked out, but anyway, you can see the uh, the respect level there for nano to yes is big. And anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed a hand analysis of a late stage MTT hand that was played out. Um, yeah, yeah, so if you guys have any questions, any comments, please. Hit me up at Focus Motion on YouTube, or you can definitely uh, hit me up at Focus Motion at gmail.com. And I'll see you guys soon, and I will hopefully put a final table video for you guys to watch as well. Until next time, peace.